Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Reeti and I am back with another lecture in the OS series. In the last lecture, we learned about real-time operating system. In this particular video, we would be learning about distributed as well as clustered operating system. So without any further ado, let's get started. So what is a distributed operating system? So a distributed operating system manages a group of networked computers, allowing them to function as a single system. Multiple computers work together but are not directly connected. So here multiple computers work together but they are not directly connected. So a distributed OS is like a team of remote workers who collaborate online. Each worker has their own laptop and internet connection but they share tasks and work together to complete a big project. Even if one worker faces any internet issues can continue working without stopping the project. So we can consider an example where a team of remote workers are working on a project. Now every remote worker had their own laptop, their own internet connection. But somehow there could be some internet issues with one of the remote worker. So other workers can come ahead and complete that particular task so that that particular project is not getting stopped. So we can say that this is an example of a distributed OS where the computer are not directly connected but they are going to perform a task and if one of them fails to perform that others will make sure that the task is completed. Now it enables more powerful and reliable systems by connecting many computers together useful in handling big tasks like running websites or processing huge amount of data. So it enables more powerful and reliable systems by connecting many computers together and it is useful in handling big tasks like running websites or processing huge amount of data. Now how it works? So the operating system makes sure that all the computers or the nodes in the network are synchronized. So first it needs to make sure that all the computers or all the nodes are synchronized. Now second, it can spread the task across the computers improving the speed as well as reliability. So it can spread the task like consider uh, for a big project there would be multiple tasks. So multiple tasks could be spread among different computers so that it can help in improving speed and reliability. Also one thing to note here, in the distributed operating system, all the nodes or all the computers are loosely coupled, they are not tightly coupled. So they are connected via a network but they are not tightly coupled. They don't share the same storage, every node have their own storage and also consider that if there is any fault or consider that one of the nodes stop working, then there is a redistribution of the task among all the other nodes which are working right now. So for example, Google search, when you search something on Google, Multiple computers or server across the world work together to find the best result and show them quickly. Now consider that me and my friends, all of them are doing Google search and you can see that every one of us gets the result like in a faster duration of time. So this happens because the computer or the servers of Google are spread across. So it helps us to get the result in a faster duration of time. Now coming to the Netflix streaming. So when you watch a movie on Netflix, different servers in different location help to deliver the video smoothly based on your internet internet speed. So based on the internet speed like me and my friends can use the Netflix and they can watch the video or watch the movie in the same quality because of the servers which are present which tends to deliver the high quality content. Now note, distributed operating system connects multiple computers and make them work as a single unit but each of it has its own resources. So as I told that uh, a bunch of remote workers working on a group project but they have their computers, they have their internet connection. So they have their own resources like CPU, storage etc. So this is a note which you should keep in mind. Now coming to the types of distributed OS. So first one is client server distributed OS, second is peer to peer distributed OS, Third is cluster computing distributed OS. Fourth is grid computing distributed OS. And fifth is cloud based distributed OS. So these are the types of distributed OS. Now here is a diagram. Now in this diagram you can see that there is a communication network, there is a workstation, terminal, file server, DB server, computer node and workstation. So this is an example of a client server distributed OS. Now in the diagram the communication network connects all the devices. So here you can see that the communication network is trying to connect all the devices. Now second is workstation which user interacts with the application. So basically in the workstation the user interacts with the application. Now third is the database server which stores and processes the data. So this is the DB server which stores as well as processes the data. Now the fourth one is terminal which provide user the access to the system. So the fourth one is terminal which provide the user the access to this particular system. So this is the example of a client server distributed OS in the same way there are multiple kinds of distributed OS. 
Now coming to a clustered OS. So clustered OS is similar to distributed OS, but more focused on providing high availability and better performance by connecting multiple computers in a cluster. It is great for systems that require high uptime like in hospital, banks or large websites. A clustered OS is like a restaurant kitchen where multiple chefs work together. They share the same ingredients, storage and same tools, computing resources. If one chef gets sick, the other can still continue cooking to keep the restaurant running smoothly. Now in distributed OS, what used to happen was the resources were not shared, like every computer has their own resources. But here the resources are shared, like the storage and the computing resources. So how it works? So these computers are connected, so if one fails, the other can take over making sure the system continues to run smoothly. So these all computers are connected. If one of the computer fails, the other one will make sure to run so that everything happens smoothly. Now it is often used for data heavy or mission critical applications. Also one thing to note about clustered operating system is all of the nodes or all of the computers are tightly coupled. They are connected via high speed network. Consider that one of the computers stops working so other computer will immediately take up its place. Also here they share the same storage. Mostly the clustered operating system are more physically connected but the distributed operating system is kind of geographically dispersed because there is no same data centers or same data storage but in clustered operating system we do have the same data storage. So here in the example you can see there are three computers computer 1, computer 2, computer 3 and they are using the same storage. So we can see in the clustered OS the resources being used are same but in the distributed OS every computer has their own resources. Now for example Linux clusters which is used for high performance computing or large databases. Now let's see the example. So first one is bank server. So bank use clustered OS so that if one server handling transaction fails, another server immediately takes over to ensure customer can still withdraw or transfer the money. Now the second one is online gaming server. So game like PUBG or Call of Duty use cluster server to make sure if one game server crashes, another can take over without kicking player out. Uh, like if you are playing game and you are being kicked out, that's the worst feeling. So there's a note. So clustered OS connects multiple computers that share a common storage system ensuring high availability and reliability. So the basic difference between the distributed and cluster OS could be in distributed OS multiple computers work together but they are not linked. They don't share the common resources, all the computer have their own resources. But in clustered OS all the computers are linked together and they share common resources. So these are some of the differences between distributed and clustered operating system. First one is how it works. So in distributed operating system, multiple computers work together but are not directly connected. And in clustered OS, multiple computers are connected and share storage resources like a restaurant in a kitchen, like a remote work team. Now what happens if one fails? So other continues to work without major issues. In clustered OS, another system in the cluster takes over immediately. Now what is the best for? So distributed is best for large scale applications applications like Google, Netflix and AWS because all of them have like their own resources. Now coming to clustered OS, so it is best for high reliability tasks like banking, gaming and enterprise server because there, there could be shared resources. So this is the common differences between distributed and clustered operating system. I hope you like this video. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're someone who is new to my channel, can go ahead and watch out the tech content first. And if you find it useful, can go ahead and subscribe. Also, if you have not followed me on my social media handles, you can go ahead and follow the links are in the description. Till then, take care, keep learning, keep growing, keep smiling. Bye all.